Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, welcome to Be My Guest. Today we have from Hudson, we have an author, and her name is Andrea Erickson. Welcome, Andrea. Hi, how are you? Well, good. She has written, this is a great story, Black Boots. Who did the cover, Andrea? Uh, this was a dear friend of mine, Mary Witters, and she is a very wonderful artist and um, vol ac actually volunteered to give me the cover. So God. that was a, a great um, tribute and also a wonderful gift for me. Do you think, does that represent you, you think, when you were little? Absolutely. Thought so, yeah. Well, the irony is I have a picture of myself. Um, I used to have a tree, which was really more of a shrub, yeah. out in my backyard. Um, we lived in the um, projects, the World War II, the World War II um, soldiers that came back, and we lived in projects there, and we had this tree sitting out back and I used to, look, or the shrub, and I used to love jumping on one of the branches. Yeah. So I found the picture about two months ago, and I said, Mary, this is how close you represented me in the photograph that you drew. She had no idea. And you had black boots. I did not have black <coughs> boots. You didn't? No. But black, why? Yeah, black boots was really a metaphor for what I, I've been through in my life with the MS. She has suffered with MS for how many years, Andrea? Um, probably 40. That's a long time. It's a long time. You were just a kid, a kid when it happened. Well, I was actually, I was 25. As a kid. <laughs> yeah, the, well, yes, and yeah. as a kid. Yeah, 25, so. how, did the doc, how did you find out you had it? Um, I actually went to the doctor after finding a problem in one of my eyes mm -hmm. and I w everything was blurry and I thought I had um, a cold mm -hmm. which ultimately affected my eye. Yeah. As it turned out, that's uh, what they call optic neuritis and optic neuritis is one of the first signs of MS for someone, for some, any woman who was younger or was in her 20s at the time. At that time, they did not have any type of MRI or any yeah. technology that yeah. could diagnose it other than stick something in my spine and do a test. Oh, and, I, know. I got it. And I said no. <laughs> so the so spine will tap, right? Yes. Oh, I can't. They tried that on me and yeah. we had to stop. I yeah. can't handle it. Yeah. And, and from then on, um, I just kept running away from what I thought would be the diagnosis. Yeah. And actually, Goldie, who is the main character and in this particular book, does the same thing. Um, so it's constantly running away. Yeah. Yes, I want to read this beautiful picture of Andrea in the back. When was this taken? You haven't changed. This was taken probably five years ago. You look great. Right. Thank you very much. <coughs> You're welcome. Black Boots is a semi-autobiographical. It's a novel that uses suspense to pull the reader into the journey, thoughts and fears of a young woman coming of age as she lives in the, with the often hidden but always lurking presence of her illness, which is MS. So from when you first got that diagnosis at 26, right, mm -hmm. with your eyes, what was the progression from there? Um, Did you go to college, Andrew? Oh yeah, I had no signs. They were n there was no ev evidence that I had any illness. Mm. So it wasn't until I was about 41 um, when I went on to a flight, mm. and the flight was not necessarily the greatest flight in the world, in a plane I'm talking. Yeah. Um, when I got off, I had pins and needles in my feet, and I thought that I had pinched a nerve. So we went to Florida, and in Florida I said, you know, when we get home, I need to have this checked out. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, after many visits to different doctors, I found out that no, there is no pinch nerve. This is related to um, something that neurology needs to check. 
and that was the first time I had a uh, what had been brand new an mm -hmm. MRI. It's sort of like a, did they call it a flare? Nope, they called it. They called it. We don't know what it is. <laughs> we don't know what it is yet. And they they basically looked at my brain, and through through the MRI, they were able to see that I had certain with MS. You develop these um, what they call plaques, yeah. and they're almost like scars on your brain. And they discovered that that's what I had, which allowed them to give me that diagnosis. That reminds me, that's a similar word, plaques, to you're not, but Alzheimer's? Yep. Yes. <clears throat> but that's not at all what you have. No. How do they tell the difference, Andrea? Um, I actually have no idea, yeah. but I do know that with um, MS plaques, you can get a plaque on your spinal cord, um, in your brain, in anywhere in your body, and mine have been restricted to my brain at the time, which are all cleared up now, mm -hmm. and my spine. How did they get cleared up? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I had no, I had no flare-ups after that. Is there medication for it? Um, I started taking medication after they completely diagnosed that I officially had MS, and I used to take initially shots yeah. um, once a week, which were for um, I can't think of the name of it, but it's it's flare, basically flare-ups that come and go. Mm. And um, after that, when I was 41, um, they continued this, mm -hmm. and and I said that's fine. And then I went. Um, it was in my actually when I turned 50. Mm -hmm. um, things were getting worse, so they changed the medication. Did that help? Um, no. No. <laughs> um, uh -huh. it's, it's what I believed it was going to do for the long term. So I, I just kind of had to go with it. And once again, they did not have a lot of um, drugs available to actually counter any type of diagnosis for MS. Was it in your family at all, Andrew? No. It just no. came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an autoimmune disease, and I, my family did have several um, types of autoimmune diseases mm -hmm. which were not um, really affecting any person's lifestyle. So well, Yeah, you remind me of my, my mother had something called Sjogren's Syndrome. It's not fatal or anything, but it's, yeah. I believe it's autoimmune. Her mouth was consistently dry. Yeah. And she always had to have a lozenger there or water with her. And she was in her about 80 by then, so she got, you know, that was, that was yeah. cool. Yeah. But I've been tested for it because I've been worried, like, you know what? Like, yeah. It's just that I think because of surgery I had many years ago, they took out a parotid, a salivary gland. Yeah. So I'm working with maybe one. <laughs> yeah. So it caught up with me. But now, did you, did you went through school? Well, first of all, tell us, give us an idea. It's a journey of resilience and love, black boots. Can you run it by through, run us through it? Sure. Um, I think the primary, um, I would say the primary, primary purpose of me writing black, black boots was really to tell a story. And my intention was to tell a story about my own experience with um, MS, my own journey with MS. And um, in that journey, I wanted to make sure that people were looking at it as a story. So I chose to start the story mm -hmm. with a mystery, yeah. which is how I started it out. And I also wanted to make the book a book that people wanted to turn the page. So fortunately, I was able to do that. Oh, yeah. This and is a great book. Yeah. I love the book. It's, uh, and it's easy to read. Yep. It's not one of those 2,000 pages, and yep. the printing is a good size. Have you noticed some of the paperbacks and books coming out now? Yep. Is it me, or is the printing getting, are they, are they getting stingy on printing? Yes. <laughs> it seems like it is. Yes. Okay, so I'm not nuts on this. No. I don't get it, yep. because uh, there's a book series I love, and I'm not like, I even wrote to the authors. Oh. I said, do you have a <laughs> larger print copy. Yeah. She was surprised to hear about it. I was like, well, I'm not alone, yeah. I think. <laughs> so what did your parents think when you were going through this? Um, 
My parents and I were pretty separate. Yeah. So my parents were in one uh, in Western Mass in a town, and I was in Central Mass. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty independent as a as a person, mm -hmm. and I was really convinced that I could conquer the world, and I was going to fight this. So that's why I started running away, and because my birth mother passed away when I was um, 11 years old. My stepmother, who was very nice, was not my mother, and I felt that I needed to continue to move on. Mm -hmm. So I had relatives in Europe and um, Germany specifically. Oh. So I was able to journey over there and meet with my grandmother, who was a natural medicine person. Mm -hmm. And so she connected me to all of her medical people. And um, I was able to really see that there were alternate methods of treating this disease in terms of what I was eating and what I was not eating. So that was also uh, a Very big... Helpful. Yes, and yeah. it was a big part of, of Goldie's journey. And I say Goldie for a reason, because Goldie um, was not me. Goldie was a character that I created. Goldie had her own life. Um, I thought she was the best part of me um, that I could ever be, but I was not that perfect person. <laughs> so. This book, Black Boots, A Journey of Resilience and Love. Now, I know Andrea, and I know that there's so many places that are going to appreciate her so much appearing there. How did they get a copy of your book, Andrea? Oh, you can uh, obtain a copy of the book in certain libraries. Mm -hmm. um, a copy of the book will be here mm -hmm. in the library as well. And it's also posted on Amazon and some, I think, Barnes & Noble, mm -hmm. um, if you want to obtain it electronically or um, if you want to have, what is it called, the, the oral version. Oh, you have the, uh, the little... I like books, but yeah. I had a friend who's a nut about reading it on her little... The <laughs> online, yeah. What's good about that? You can't smell it, you can't feel it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I want a real book. Yeah, and, and it's, and fortunately, having that opportunity for people to make choices, whether they're choices that are financially based or convenience based, um, they're all available. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Have you, where have you appeared so far? Um, so far, I've been here, yeah. um, fortunately, and I've also been in um, Westboro at yeah. Tatnick, yeah. and I've also been in Worcester at Tidepool, and I've got a number of locations that I have yet to do. Yes. I sent, as a publicist, I sent every month at least two <laughs> lists to keep you busy <laughs> until the next month. Yeah. But it's interesting because you get to meet so many people. and. Like I tell my others, they'll say, well, why is one of the places you're, why are you sending me to senior centers? I said, because yeah. some of the seniors have grandchildren and they have children. And in your case, MS, people in their families, yes. maybe some of them have had it. Yes. Are you the, you're the only one in your family that, that was diagnosed with it? Yes. The only one. Now, your grandma was in Germany. Yes. So you're part German. Mm -hmm. So am I. Oh, yeah. okay. They changed... Did they change the last name in your family when they came to America? My father was always Erickson, but they changed his grandfather's name when he came to the United States. He was from Finland. So okay, my mother's was... <laughs> why they changed it, I don't know. I guess it's called anglicizing. Yeah. It was Von Hartling. Yeah. Then it became Hurdle. I like the way it sounded, but I guess back then and I wasn't cool. <laughs> and then they were part French, and it was Dupuis. Yeah. Then it became Depew. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> Luckily, on my dad's size, it was strict Lewis, Monroe, yeah. John, you know, I mean, yeah. so different. Do you have children at all? Um, no. 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 Animals? I have two dogs. You have two dogs. What kind of dogs are they? Um, so I have uh, my dog, Dixie, who's about 15, uh, wow. not 15, um, 11. Yeah. And Bo, who we just got, and he's a crazy dog. He's one. So what kind of dog is he? He is a crazy dog. He's a crazy, he's a mutt, right? He's, yes. 
Are you about to write another book now? Come on, you can't leave us in the lurch here. Oh no, I'm I'm in the process of writing a, a follow up to a follow Black up Boots. to Black Boots. Yeah, and I'm I'm still kind of pulling the name back and forth, so I haven't decided on anything yeah. specific to that as of yet. How long did it take you to write Black Boots? Well, I, I think Black Boots has been its own journey for me. Um, I started initially back in 2010, mm -hmm. and I was originally writing pieces of my experience as a blog. And um, then I realized, well, no one's going to be interested in my journey. This is very boring. Mm -hmm. um, and then it wasn't until when we initially um, came down with the um, COVID mm. uh, in, in the country that I started staying at home and I said, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to start writing this book again. And my husband, T Tony, who's here with me, um, he was, he's the one that gave me the idea of making the first book. Definitely. Really. Definitely. About, about a shark. <clears throat> I mean, this time, it's a picture of uh, basically you and in black boots climbing a tree. And I love the way the uh, <clears throat> that your illustrator did that. What was your illustrator's name again? Mary Witters. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Shout out to you. You did a great job on this one. Now, will your next one be very similar to this in size and shape? And um, I'm not sure yet, yeah. um, but I think that the notion that I wanted to get across to everybody is that Black Boots um, may have been my journey specifically told through the eyes of Goldie with MS, but the book is truly dedicated to anyone that is dealing with a disability because everyone has to wear black boots exactly. and has to really go through the mud in order to get to the place that they want to be. Well, besides black, um, uh, bookstores, book cafes, senior centers, libraries, I think because of your experience, the support groups, there are so many. I believe, I believe Milford up the street, Milford Hospital yep. has one. And wouldn't they love to have you come and yep. share? Absolutely. I'll get that information to you. Absolutely. Um, I can also check out UMass and a lot of the other places, but I think you would love it because you're sharing, you're helping somebody by talking about it. Exactly. Do you find that a lot of the people don't talk about it? Well, I think that a lot of people don't know what to ask and a lot of people don't want to tell. So they view it as I did. Well, th this is a, a boring disease. I can't do anything that I used to do. Mm -hmm. And really believe that their life is over and all they can do is sit in one space and, and take up space. Um, but that's not true at mm -hmm. all. There are so many opportunities um, for living with MS. And that's what I'm doing. Did you have to retire, or very, very early, did you have to? Yes. What were you doing, Andrea? I was working for Cisco. For the what? Cisco Systems. Oh, the Cisco's, okay. And, and Hanover, right? Was um, Hanover? No, no, Cisco, Cisco was the last firm that I worked for. Yeah. And um, I ended up, Actually, I ended up getting laid off, not because of my MS, but my whole department got laid off um, and got farmed out to Canada. Um, so I was looking for a job, which became its own exercise. Yeah, <laughs> so. definitely. So when you went to college, what did you study? I studied, studied English. Oh, perfect. You yeah. were, were you good at story writing as a kid? Um, I was always writing something. Yeah. And it was ultimately a college professor that s asked me what my major was. Yeah. And my father, um, being my father, said, you're going to be microeconomics. And I what? said, I said, no. Uh, I s and so I ultimately, when my professor approached me yeah. and said to me, um, you're really good at writing. Yes. Why, why don't you write something? And why don't you become an English major? And ultimately, that's what I decided to do. And that's where I spent my entire um, education when I was in college. Where'd you go? I went to Westfield State. You know, that's where I should have gone. Yeah. Were you raised around Wilbraham? 
No, I was raised yeah, very close. Where right? I grew up. I, oh, okay. Yes. I was raised in Ludlow. Oh, gosh, you were my neighbor. Oh, yeah. yeah. I applied to Westfield, Keene, yep. and Plymouth. But oh, you see Plymouth State University up near the White Mountains? Yes. That was it. That's what yeah. I wanted. <laughs> I really didn't have any idea what I wanted to do. All the girls were going into elementary ed. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I went in there. And first, I was very sick for the first couple of months, physically. I knew no one. I was so homesick. It was a three-hour jaunt back and forth with my... Finally, I snapped out of it. <clears throat> and um, I said, my roommate was an art major, and I love art. I said, ah, oh, that looks like a blast. I just, without telling my parents, changed majors. Yep. Then I had a teacher, it was the Fundamentals of Art. We were, she put some stupid plan up on something, and, oh, draw this. I thought, well, okay, fine, I'm an abstract artist, so I'm not particularly interested in every single line in the leaf. She came over, and she's old lady, elderly, and she said, is there something wrong with your eyes? I never went back. I knew instinctively, you never say that to an uh, artist. The way she could have handled it is, Jan, that's amazing. There's another way. Would you like to try it a little bit more detailed? That's how you handle it. So then I changed off, went to art history, did a great job. <laughs> oh. But that's what a teacher can do. Yes. You know, I was nervous enough being up there. So you would, I should have gone to Westfield. It was close to home. That's yes. where I should have gone. Did yeah. you like it? Oh, uh, Westfield was great. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you live there or did you commute? I lived. I did it too up at Plymouth. But that yeah. was a party school. I didn't know that. Yeah. And I wasn't into that stuff. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, it had quite a reputation, but we I didn't think, know. <laughs> I think many of the schools were party schools Oh, yeah, at even that Holy time. Cross. I used yeah. to live off South Street. The yeah. kids would be out doing uh, things in the backyard. We'd have to get the police there at 2 in the morning. Yeah. But I, I really don't know. Now, you've got another book to come. This is Andrea Erickson, and she has written Black Boots, A Journey of Resilience and Love. This is about her journey, okay? And she has MS, and those of you out there with MS, you're going to really love this, okay? You can get a copy of this over here at the Upton Library in the dedicated local author section. You can borrow that. And Andrea, again, how can they get a copy of your book? Um, they can use, go right online and go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble and order it through there, and it's relatively quick, um, and you have the opportunity to get it like on a less expensive basis when you go to, um, if you choose to get an electronic copy of the book itself. Right. Have so you been to Hudson Library? She lives in Hudson. Have you been reaching out to, to your locals? Um, I actually have not been doing as much as I wanted to do yeah. just because of the summer. And yeah. as many of the MSers know um, who may be out there, um, MS and heat do not mix well. Oh, well, I can understand. <laughs> and so with all of the days where it was very hot and very humid, um, it was really not an opportune moment for me. So I've not been as vigilant mm -hmm. as really I, I could be with continuing to market this book. Do you have with MS, do your joints hurt a lot? I no, no. That, that I have no pain. Okay, so it's not that. No. The most serious symptom for you is what? Um, it's really, uh, it, it has affected my legs. Your so legs, it's yeah. really not being able to walk. She came yeah. upstairs with her husband, and we luckily we have those, that cool Stairmaster. And um, I have, it had completely gone out of my mind for a minute that she has MS. Of course, she's going to. And I look, I said, what'd you do to your leg? And you're looking like, what? <laughs> it just looks like you had an accident, you know, had a surgery. Yeah. But we're lucky. We have, I love that little go-go. It doesn't go fast enough for me, though. <laughs> when you go to the grocery store, do you ride in the little go-kart there that, you, you know, so you can shop? You know those little... Yeah. Yeah. I, like I have done that oh, in the fun, past. They don't go fast enough. No. They go very <laughs> slow. And, and fortunately, my husband... He goes with you. He's, he, he is the shopper. Well, when I've had operations on my foot or whatever, and I get on it, I try to go, but I'm not good at taking corners because I end up taking the exhibit with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or it runs out of steam in the middle of an aisle. Yeah. You're like, oh, hello, everybody, you know, and you're <laughs> waiting for some help. What is the hardest part, Andrea, for you coping with this? You seem excellent. 
Thank you. <laughs> I like to think of myself as excellent. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so um, I think a lot of it, because MS changes with each individual person who may have it, mm -hmm. I have really been blessed because all of the impacts that MS has had on me have really affected primarily my legs, as yeah. I mentioned. Sure. But the, the part of it that I miss is I miss, I was a very active person. So I miss the activity, I miss the walking and the hiking and the skiing and the golfing, um, which I cannot do the way I used to do it. So I developed this alternate, um, I would say, world where I can actually do some of those things, but not in the way I used to do them. And is it as exciting as it was? Yeah. Not really. But what it is, is it is providing me the opportunity to have that same experience of going down a hill when I'm skiing yeah. and feeling the, the uh, air in my face and or sailing on a boat in, in any lake and feeling that shifting motion of the boat itself. You are it's, a survivor and an adapter. Yes. You are able to, so many hands you will lemon, you're going to make lemonade. Yes. She is a power of example. Yeah, there are, there's a lot, I think there's a lot of groups out there. I want to uh, look into that some more for you because just hearing you yep. is enough. And seeing your face, she looks happy. It, you look wonderful. <laughs> do you have physical therapy? Do you do that? Oh, I do PT three times a week. Oh, you know, yep. I like PT. Yeah. I like it. It's relaxing. Yeah. It's, well, it is, it, it, it is really making use of my leg muscles, mm. which um, if, you do, if you don't practice, it leaves you, yeah. um, and, and my arm muscles and my, and my thinking. So yeah. there are um, three different areas that, that they focus on yeah. to try to keep me fit. Do you enjoy it? Yes. Is it in a room with other people too? Oh, yes. Yeah. There are other MSers. I've been to PT many times for my foot, you name it, and where I go to has like five beds right in the middle, and they think the television's up there, and it's a happy thing, and then there's one bed over on the side. So one day one of the aides came, Jan, come on down. She was pointing me towards that thing on the side. I said, no, 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 I want to be with the other kids. <laughs> and she said, okay. They had one available. I don't want to be off to the side. I want to be with everyone around me. <laughs> you get to know people. This is great. Now, we're going to have you back on again. Any idea when your next book might be done? Um, I'm expecting probably within the year and a half. Good. Yeah. That will be really cool. So you could have the same illustrator? Um, I, I asked her already. So Did she said yes? She said she's thinking about it. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name again? Mary Witters. Mary, come on now. you got to think about it. This, this is so adorable. Thank you so much for being on the show, Andrea. Oh, thank you very much for having me. We're going to be, we're in touch a lot. We're going to be in touch a lot. <laughs> it was, thank you, and we will see you next time and be my guest. Riding on a shooting star Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer Than it seems 